Now that we've defined what a genome is, let's take a look at how different genomes compare, and how we can use this information in some really cool ways. So first we're going to look at some statistics. Let's compare the female and the male genome. So, as we know, males have one copy of the X chromosome and one of the Y. And females have two X chromosomes. So, even including gender differences, male versus female, almost all humans are over 99% identical. Over 99%. So that means that out of the 3 billion base pairs, approximately 2.97 billion are the same. You may be surprised to learn that humans actually share 96% of their genetic information with chimpanzees. And another crazy one, we actually share 50% with the banana. So not even another animal, an entirely different organism, it's just a plant, and we still share 50% of our DNA with it. That's pretty cool. So this is all well and fine, but why do we really care? Who cares whether a sequence is GAT or GAC? Well, let's find out. So in order to understand why it's really important, first we're going to look at how we got where we are. So we're going to look at a quick timeline. And that timeline's going to start in 1953. And that's when Watson and Crick discovered the double helix structure of DNA. And then we have to zoom all the way out to 1989. And that's when the National Human Genome Research Institute was established by the National Institutes of Health. And then quickly after that, in 1990, we have the beginning of the Human Genome Project. And that was an effort to sequence a couple of genomes, and they were building a reference genome. And we're going to explain that in a couple other videos, but the key thing to know is that without the Human Genome Project, the amount of research that's going on today would not be possible. And then in 2003, the Human Genome Project finishes. And that was a really big deal. So where are we now in 2013? Well, in this time, sequencing has gotten a lot faster and a lot cheaper. And now what we, we have what we call NGS, Next Generation Sequencing. It's faster, and it's cheaper, and it's driving a whole lot of research. So now we're going to take a quick look at a graph that shows how quickly sequencing is improving. So back in 2001, that's just a little over a decade ago, it cost $100 million to sequence one genome. This is one genome. Okay, and then we, then we get out here to 2008, and we're at $10 million. And now, in 2013, it costs less than $10,000 to sequence a genome. That's still a lot of money for one person, maybe, but it's much cheaper than $100 million, and that's catalyzing a lot of new research into genomics. So now we're going to talk a little bit about what that research entails. So here are some of the applications of genomics, and there are quite a few. There are things like forensics, 
which would involve determining who was at the scene of a crime by matching a person's DNA to biological evidence found at that scene. Uh, things like synthetic biology, where it's being used to create biofuels, materials, and even new crops. You may have heard recently about the orange, orange juice issue in Florida. They're having trouble growing oranges, and they're using synthetic biology. They're going to introduce a new gene, possibly, a, a gene from a pig, uh, in order to make the oranges more resilient. There are things like ancestry and migration patterns. Some people are even trying to leverage genomics for memory storage and biological computing. When you think about it, computers, uh, they operate with zeros and ones. But in genomics, we've got four bases. And so instead of using just two different bits, now we've got four, and that could really speed things up. But the focus of this tutorial is going to be on genomics in medicine. And that's really one of the forefronts of genomics research. So genomics in medicine. Now we're not going to go really into detail about all of these things, but we're just going to get a brief glimpse at them. There are things like cancer and disease therapies. Things like uh, treatment options, figuring out which treatments might be best. And that opens up this other thing that we call personalized medicine, figuring out which treatment is best for me. And that's based on the sequence of, of my genome. There are also, uh, there's research being done in mental health, disease and risk assessment. Sometimes they'll say, they'll look at your sequence and say, oh, you have a 50% chance of getting this, this disease or something like that. And we'll go into more depth into what that really means in another video. They're also looking at addiction. Uh, genomics is being used for vaccines, gene therapy, and a whole slew of other topics. We've already covered a lot in these first few videos, so we're going to do a quick review all the topics that we discussed. So first we define what genomics is. And we said that it's the study of all of the genes in an organism. We also talked about DNA, right, which has that double helix structure and it has four base pairs, adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine. We talked about some stats. Um, we said that there are three billion base pairs times two, one from mom, one set from mom, and one set from dad in each person, and that's because we are diploid. We also said that there are 23 chromosomes, uh, 23 pairs of chromosomes from each parent, or 23 pairs of chromosomes, and uh, there's 23 from mom and 23 from dad. We also said that 98% of the genome is non-coding, and what that means is that 98% does not actually code for proteins. And we're going to talk later about what it's actually used for. And we also talked about some of the applications of genomics, especially in medicine. And that's going to be the focus of the rest of these videos.